We're talking about the new thing. Where's the new thing in my life? Where's the new thing in your life? And I want to connect it this morning, my brother, my sister, with... I know you know things need to change in our lives. I know you know things need to change in our nation. Things need to change in the church. Things need to change in the different <clears throat> groups of denominations and people... Things need to change. And when I, I hear and when I see things need to change in my life, maybe you also, in our thought patterns, in things in the heart, in our ways, in our dealings, in our relationships, in our dreams, our, how we see the future, sometimes we can get discouraged knowing that, oh, I must work on these 10, 12, 15 20 points. God comes and he says, when he look at you, when he look at me, he says, I want to do a new thing. And the word is a new thing. The word is not, you need to change all this, all this and this and this, that is just wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong, that is wrong. The enemy, when I'm aware of certain things that must change, he wants to come and condemn me so that I'm discouraged so that I either do nothing or go into a performance to try and do it right. God says, I want to come, but I want to do something new, something fresh. Something new, something fresh in your life. Something new, something fresh in your relationships, in your work, in your finances, in, in the giants that you need to face my brother, and if you, at the end of this year, sister, going into next year, <clears throat> and we go with all the, what is the new year for the new year resolutions, or what? Something like that. Let it be from a place not of, this time I'm going to do it right. But this time I'm going to surrender to God to do a new thing in my life. Something that is fresh. And in the new is not just the restoration. In the new is the victory. In the new is where I find the, the, the new strategy, the, the new way of thinking, the new approach in what I do, the new way of placing my heart before God. Let me first read a few scriptures. Let's just quickly go with that. <clears throat> Forget the former things. Tell your neighbor, forget. Guys, if we need to forget something, it's not the word of God. Hello. The enemy and all of hell will try to make sure that you forget the word of God. Forget so many times in worship that you surrendered yourself to God. So many times that you just laid before him. So many times that you had awesome, precious, intimate moments with God. But now the enemy wants you to remember all the wrong things you've done so that you dismiss all the excellent times with God and his word. No, let it be precious. Let it be precious. Don't forget what God has done in your life. Don't forget those precious moments. Build on that. Learn from the mistakes, but build on that what is right. That's always what we say to our children, hey, they need to build on what we've laid right as foundations, but they must better learn from our mistakes. I hope so. All of us. Amen. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Anybody except me that sometimes would dwell on something of the past. And you know the problem is, when I dwell on some things, negative things in my life, I'm not saying being dishonest, make as if it never happened. No, it must be dealt with through the blood of Christ. But when I dwell on the negative things in my past, you know, and you give yourself no grace, then it's impossible to give others grace. Then the pointing of the finger will be there. You will dwell on what others did to you. You will dwell on their mistakes. Because you have the problem, you are dwelling here. On the things of the past. But if you can show mercy and receive the mercy and the grace from God through the blood of Christ, then you can give it to others. Is it not the greatest commandment that 
Yes, Lord, love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, strength, everything. Because when you love him, you open up for his love to come in. So that you can love others how? As yourself. So it's first with God and receive from him so that you can love yourself. And in the way that you love yourself, that's the only way you can love others. If you don't love yourself and you have just these issues with yourself the whole time, you will have the issues with people because you cannot love them. Because you only can love them in the way that you love yourself. So dwell on the past in you. You will always dwell on the past in others. And you will never get it right to go beyond the place of what that one or what that one, how that one disappointed me, that one hurt me, that one spoke behind my back. And it will always be an issue to get over the thing of people disappointing you. But the, but the challenge is because here inside... So many times you are disappointed in the choices that you made. But now I need to make sure, will I obey God through the blood of Christ and respect him that through his blood, tomorrow is a place of victory. Revelation. Eh? Standing before the Lamb. Standing with the Lamb. Those who overcame through the blood of the Lamb. And through the blood of the Lamb, they don't have the testimony of everything they did wrong. They don't have the accusation and the condemnation of everything they did wrong. They have the testimony of, look what the Lord has done. But I can only see what the Lord has done if I look through the blood of Christ. First at myself, and then look what the Lord has done in my life. And I thank him for that coming at the end of this year. And I thank him for what he has done. Hello? Then you can thank God for people around you that sometimes you felt that you want to slaughter. <clears throat> then you can thank God for them, but you need to sort it out inside here. You better start to then obey God when he says, think about maybe, forget about the former things. Try not to dwell on the past. I understand if you dwell on the past, but try not to. <laughs> no, that's not the word of God. There's a command. Yes, I work through things and I'm going through counseling and I'm, I'm, God is walking a road with me because he accepts me as I am. Yeah, he accepted you, but that change, that change is to become more like him. That change because he longs for an intimate relationship and he's a consuming fire. Flesh cannot boast in his presence. You stand out with rubbish before the throne. You stand with rubbish before the cross. Before the cross. And when you accept what Christ has done for you at the cross, then through the blood, being cleansed, you come before the throne. I lay everything down at his feet. All the rubbish. No. You lay it down at the cross. Because in his throne room, there's protocol. In his throne room, there's just beautiful. In his throne room, you come with beauty. You, you come as beauty into his presence at the throne of grace. Because through the blood, you've been cleansed. You've been made beautiful. Let's say, I've been made beautiful through the blood of Christ. But then I need to stop with that. I need to settle it at the cross of Christ that I will forget the former things. I will not dwell on the past. See, and only I can see when I choose to forget and not to dwell on the past. Then I will be able to see that God is doing a new thing and he's going to do a new thing in your life. You will have victory. Now it springs up. Do not, do you not perceive it? It's like God saying, can you not see? Can you not see what I'm doing? Do you not perceive it, that I'm doing a new thing? Do you not perceive it, that I'm working in your life? Do you not see that every time that you surrendered to me, I was there to do a new thing? Not just to deal with the mistakes, to make sure that you're not in trouble anymore. That's performance. Guys, that's the uh, that spirit of religion. Just to settle things, to get out of the crisis, to get out of the things that are wrong. Just to get out of... No, 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 no. I want God wants to do a new thing. And in the word new is have an expectation for something fresh. 
What's your definition of the new? God has a certain definition. And in the word new, it's not just you want to settle all the rubbish in your life that it's gone. He calls it with excitement a new thing. Yes, you failed in that. Yes, that was the wrong mistake. Yes, that was not good. Yes, you are struggling with that. But beyond forgiving, beyond the place of forgiveness, God is excited that something new is going to happen. Let's say God is excited about my future. <clears throat> and in that is locked up the new. The new. I'm running this ahead, but I need to say it now. When the word says, when God says, I'm bringing a new covenant. He says it through the prophets. Then he says it through in Hebrews. In so many places. He says a new covenant. It, it doesn't mean the old covenant. God sinned in the old covenant. God initiated the old covenant. God initiated the old covenant. But he says, I'm bringing that what is new. Where I'll write my laws in your heart and in your mind. So that you think the way I think. So that your heart carries what I carry in my heart. And from that place, I will forgive and forget. I will never think about that again. So new covenant in the new that he wants to do and will do. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. If you believe you are with God in a new covenant. If you are in performance and religion in, under the old covenant, I'm going to slaughter that chicken or whatever is outside there. But what I'm saying is, my brother, my sister, if I respect the blood, if I respect God that initiated the new covenant in my life, I need to decide to settle with the past. To settle the past. To settle yesterday. If I respect the blood. Get a revelation of the blood. Get a wow afresh about God and his grace and his forgiveness and his mercy over your life. Get a wow. Get a respect for the cross of Christ so that you can brag about the cross. So that you can boast in nothing else except in the cross. I can boast in nothing else because in myself I'm rubbish. But in Christ and through Christ I'm shocked through the cross about the value God has placed on my life. They say I'm shocked and amazed through the cross of Christ the value that he placed on my life. It's maybe a sentence to remember to send it you know on the 25th of December. Please. Okay. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See. That's a command. God com is commanding you to see. It's not an option. I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? <coughs> God is saying, why not? How is it possible that you cannot see it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. But too many times... We are trusting God for the way. We are trusting God for the strategy in my business. The strategy in my finances. The strategy in this and that and that. What must happen next year? What is the way, Lord? How are you going to organize the stream? How will there be a flow? Because just next to the flow, there's a desert. Streams in the wasteland. I, you can be in the wasteland. You can be in the wasteland. And it's just two meters to the right. Or maybe one meter to the left, you are in the wasteland. The other guy said, you are wasted. You will waste your time, you will waste your effort, you waste your uh, religion. You waste. In that place of wasting your time, in that place of wasting with how you figure out things with that other person in that relationship and in that, or in that crisis or that challenge or that frustration or that whatever we want to call it. Wasted. But you know, in that place where you feel it's waste, it's wasting your time, right there, don't walk away, but ask God, God, where is the stream? Where is the stream of loving water, loving water, loving water in the midst of that what I feel is totally, totally wasted? He's not going to change the wasteland. He's not going to take you necessarily out of the wasteland. 
but he will provide the stream. That fresh stream of living water, that freshness of his guidance, that freshness of having this intimate time with God, that freshness of finding a strategy from him. But your testimony will be, even if you're out of that place, will be that awesome stream of fresh guidance, love, grace, forgiveness of God that was just there when I felt wasted, when I felt I'm just in this wasteland. Oh, please, let us get into that place. Get into your prayer life, in your time with God, in your time with the Word, in your time with how you walk with Holy Spirit. Honor the one living in you as temple of the Spirit. Holy Spirit that came over you so that you are empowered to be a witness. A witness first to yourself. First to yourself. You'll be my witnesses. You will be my witnesses. Jylle sal my getuies wees, as die Heilige Geest oor jylle kom. And if you respect then the Holy Spirit over your life, you've taken your forgiveness, there will be a testimony first in you. Not just, I need to testify out there, but there's a testimony in, in, in me that is authority. I respect the testimony in me. Because yes, there's a, there's a court case that I eternally, no, just on earth, could have. And that is with the accuser of the brethren, the devil himself. And he can call in many witnesses of circumstances, many witnesses of demons that were assigned to your life the way you obeyed that demon. That spirit of fear, that spirit of anxiety, that spirit of bitterness, that spirit of anger. Oh man, the accuser can bring in many, many witnesses. Praise God. Yes. Then Jesus stood up and he said, I take all the blame for everything. Will you respect your witness through the Holy Spirit? Will you respect your witness? Or will you give authority to all the witnesses that, that, that hell and the devil can bring to the stand? Where by fact, by fact, by fact, it happens. But by truth, you are set free. That God so loved the world, so loved the world that in spite of all the rubbish, all the wasting of a life, all the wasting of time. You have an excellent future, something new, something new, something, everybody say new. New is going to happen. I'm not just out of the rubbish, but God's going to do something fresh, something that is excited, he's excited about. In the new is God's dream. In the new is God's excitement about tomorrow with you. There's so much depth in the word new, according to God's definition of new. In that what is new covenant against old covenant. God veracht nie die ou verbond nie. Wat is veracht? Despise. God does not despise the old covenant. Because the symbolism and the depth of the symbolism is beyond the finish point. You will find the symbolism deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper for eternity even. Of the old covenant. Awesome. What God has done. Look at so many things that God has done. Hello? So in yesterday there can be such a lot of depth in what happened to you. But a lot of the things, a lot of the things even in a positive sense of yesterday that you don't understand. That you don't understand. But when you walk with Christ you will understand things of yesterday where he was what did he mean three and a half years with Christ and then when the Holy Spirit came on them and something new happened and they went into the new they understood what he said then 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 and suddenly they understood three years with Christ with so many things even written in the word they didn't stand understand at all what he said the guys that were closest to him but when the Holy Spirit come on you, my brother, my sister, and you allow, allow the new, you will have a testimony of Christ. Of when you read that word yesterday and it meant nothing. You didn't understand anything. Suddenly, it just opens up. And God does something new in your heart about John 3.16, about Zephaniah 3.17. God just something, do something new. Not just a new, get you out of the rubbish. 
But new in what you saw yesterday, suddenly there's such much, so much more in what you can see. What is beautiful out of that scripture. Expect the new next year. Expect the new. That God can open up the word so much more for you that you're going to wow. You're going to have so much more intimate times in his presence. You're going to see so much more of him in creation. Job, and they said, I've heard about you, but now my eye has seen you. Where's your experience? Write it down. Write it down by faith. And not just write it. I'm going to stress less. I'm going to get this breakthrough. I'm going to get that. I'm, for the three of you, maybe that's writing it down. But otherwise, in the heart that we sometimes, yes, we sit that with that commitments to God. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. I believe. Amen. Come on, man. The way, way in the wilderness, wilderness, the place where you are confused, the place where circumstances are so around you, it looks the same here, 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 where must you go? He will give the way, he will give the strategy in your confusion, he will give you the strategy in your circumstances, he will give you the strategy when you don't know left, right, back, forward, where is it? I don't even know how to go forward because I don't know what side is forward. In the wilderness let's say God will give me the strategy in my wilderness he will not take the wilderness away because he wants to test you to have a testimony a testimony in here about how he just brought this strategy brought this way open up this way for you when you are willing to go there's no sea that will open up unless you are willing to follow Moses up to the point of the race, into the place of the dead end, into the place of the dead end, I will follow. I will not fight with him first and say, are you totally crazy? There's the race, well, what are you doing with us? But you will follow into the place of the dead end, and only when you're at the dead end, in that place, and you follow God in obedience, there you will find a Red Sea opening up for you. Hello? Otherwise, I stay in Egypt. Um, all right, Moses, just give me the plan. Give me the strategy. When we get there, what are we going to do? When we go out, how are we going to have food? Uh, when we go out of there, I have a brain. You know, God gave me a brain. I'm not stupid, man. I need to follow you. But what's going to happen when we get there? Where will be the water? Where will be the... How will the sun? We will be gone with the sun. And when, if you want us to go through the... It's just because you're clever. You're not stupid, man. You want to make a responsible decision. <laughs> God, on purpose. My flesh says that person is spiteful. With God, it is, I'm jealous for your dependency on me. I'm jealous for your focus on me, not on the strategy. I gave you the strategy, and then you, there you go with the strategy. I'm jealous for your love. I'm jealous that next year you will focus more on me, more on me, more, more on me. And, and let go of the frustration because you don't know. I am the way. So if God makes a way in the wilderness and you cannot see Christ in the way because he is the essence of your strategy. He's the essence of the way that you will find. <sighs> if you cannot see him in that, you are in the wrong place. But in that strategy, it can be ridiculous. It can be ridiculous. There we stand. Okay, let's go seven times around uh, every day. Let's go time. Okay, now. <laughs> this Joshua is really desperate. He didn't work for six days. Every time once. Now we must go seven times in one day. He's really getting desperate, you know. I think he's stressed out. Because he realized, hey, this was not so totally from God. Yes, we can do that thing seven times out of frustration, out of desperation, out of stress and out of fear. Yeah, but if we could follow God's strategy and be willing to be seen as a fool in at least trying, trying to go with God. Ah, what about that? Because I'm willing to be seen as a fool. What? The nation's going to laugh at us. They're going to laugh at us. There's no mighty, mighty, mighty nation with any professional, professional, excellent soldiers. Just walk around the city, around the walls, and something's going to happen. Are you willing to be made a fool according to your flesh? According to your flesh. 
Because when you obey God, He's going to challenge you. That you will hear the voice that I could stand ashamed. I could stand like a fool. I could be laughed at. I could have to go back and say, sorry guys. <laughs> yeah, I, I really thought this was God. I'm not saying to be uh, argeloos. Always oh, my English. Argeloos is what? That's good. Nobody. Okay, you understand Archelous, most of you. I'm just, I'm just going in it, but I'm not responsible, and responsibility is not to be in control. Responsibility is to hear from God and to be dependent on Him. I'm a responsible person by hearing from Him, not responsible that I can make my own choices. Like we, we were taught many times as when we were small and when we grow up as adults, now you're responsible, you, uh, young man, you must now make your own choices. Some of that a little bit right, some of that totally stupid to, to teach the, your children that like that. So if you want to be responsible, it means you are more dependent. You're more dependent. The little kid, he wants to do this, he wants to do that, because he's, he's a child, he's even childish. Because he's a child. But when you grow up, you realize, I need to be more dependent on God. Amen. You with me? Okay, that's the first one. We need... Oh, we can be here for long because we're going to eat here. You don't have to go home and prepare food for an hour. Is that okay? Donkey. Donkey, Jonathan. Good. <laughs> Hebrews 8. However, he finds fault with them, showing his inadequacy, when he says, Behold, the days will come, says the Lord, when I will make and ratify new, a new covenant or agreement with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. How they responded in the old covenant. God didn't make the mistake in the old covenant, but how they responded was wrong. And I can respond wrong towards God in the yesterday, in the things that was symbolism, in the things that I didn't understand. I, I respond, didn't respond accurately. But there's tomorrow something new in, in God's commitment towards me. Covenant is commitment. In God's commitment towards me and my commitment towards him, God wants to do something new. For that, what didn't work out yesterday, it will work out tomorrow. God says it will work out tomorrow. What didn't work out yesterday in our covenant, in our relationship. I want to put that just for us here, not just in the context of before and after Christ. Okay. For this is the covenant. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, I will imprint my laws upon their minds and even upon their innermost thoughts and understanding and engrave them upon their hearts. And I will be their God and they shall be my people. And it's not just you qualify. I will be your God. You will be my people. So you will, you will qualify. To be something is to live it. Be who you're supposed to be. By, how can I be who I'm supposed to be? By living it out. By living who I'm supposed to be. The little eagle egg with the chickens? No. Be who you're supposed to be. Oh, by doing what? By trying to get the worms and trying to get the, the millies and the whatever. And the chickens, the Christian chickens on the farm, they jump on the table and get it from our food. Can you believe it? A little bit scriptural, but I'm serious. That's what these chickens do out there. Be careful of them. But what am I saying? Eagle, be who you are. Be God's people. And he will be what a God will be, what the God will be. He will present himself as God in your life. He will present himself as the final son. He will present himself as the protection as he wants to be the protection. And remember, protection does not mean, because we don't understand, man. We don't understand what's happening in the Middle East. We don't understand those stuff. But the context of God protecting is, I will protect you to be able to do my will. Not I will just, yes, we, when, we, when we go somewhere, God, please protect us. And that's right, because we acknowledge him as our God, and, and he is the final protection in my life. But protect me when I go and have holiday in the Cape, that I will be protected to do only that what is according to your will. 
protect me to do to live and be excited about what I'm going to do in the Cape. Just the things that you are excited excited about for me to do in the Cape. And that doesn't mean you must read the Bible nine hours and pray for another three. Hello? He wants his children to enjoy life. Are you with me? But at the end of the day, to enjoy his will. Enjoy his will. Amen. Even some of those Christians that said, uh, what a privilege to be a martyr for Christ. And in the copycat, in the copycat, the enemy <clears throat> brings it in for the guys dying in the name of Muhammad and Allah. And that is their comfort, so many of them in Gaza. No. But that's the counterfeit for the true and the genuine. Of what a privilege to lay down my life. What a privilege to live for him. Amen. So may God help you to understand when he is doing the new. When he is doing the new. Where we are going to when God is doing the new in my life. It means the new of how to be his people. Through my lifestyle, through my heart, through my thoughts. How must I be his his people, not his child. How must I be his people? Because he has called you as a family. God is a God towards the people, not just your God. If you want him to be your God, you will be part of the people. You will be understand how to be a people. How to be there for others around you. How to live not for yourself, but to be a, everybody say, a people. Now, that is, doesn't sound correct English, but uh, people, a, a collective group that has a collective identity. In it, and, and your identity is found in the people. Because the people is the body of Christ. And your life is hidden in Christ, in the body. In the people, in the body of Christ, there's a hidden life that will be revealed to you if you understand how to be part of a people. Go and do your own thing. Okay, but you'll never find who you are as part of a people. The life that is hidden in Christ. You with me? For three of you that were not here for ten Sundays. A life that is hidden in Christ because you are crucified with Christ. You died with Christ. You were buried with Christ. You were raised with Christ. Seated with Christ in heavenly places. So that from that place you will find the life that is hidden in Christ for you to have that excellent quality eternal quality valuable, valuable life but he will protect you as your God but the protection will be there to do his will that martyr is protected to have the capacity the love the awesome worship towards his God in a place of intimacy in that moment even when he dies so that his life will be a testimony to the nations as a seed given that sounds a little bit rough but even into death Jesus said he will obey the father even into death and obedience was part of was a form and an expression of intimacy intimacy you are still here we're going to eat just now. Just be awake. Okay, next one. Isaiah 40. 31. But those who hope. And the other context in the translations are wait. In the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Will renew their strength. Renew. Renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run, not grow weary. They will walk, not be faint. You will have to walk. You will have to walk. You will have to run. And sometimes, yes, we need to rest. And that place of rest, if I don't run, I need to rest, but I need to rest in his presence. Because that hope is connected with weight. As you all know, most of the translation says those who wait on the Lord will renew their strength. But weight is never without hope. That is, I'm quitting, I'm unfaithful, I give up, I'm fed up. That is, I quit. And sometimes in a religious context, we could say, no, I'm waiting on God or I'm waiting for God. <laughs> okay only me but God's going to help us God's going to help us 
to understand. I'm waiting. And this December, when you're on holiday, you are resting in his presence. Because there's an eternal, unshakable hope in you that is called Jesus Christ. And through him, you know, you have an excellent year next year. You're not going to stress about next year. You're not going to stress about things that are supposed to work out. Amen. You're not going to stress about all the giants next year you need to face and things that happened this year that was just a failure or that you tried and you tried and you prayed and didn't work and you trust and you didn't work, you forgave and it didn't work out and that guy didn't change when I forgave him. <clears throat> We're going to focus in the waiting. We're going to focus in the resting in December on the one that is called my eternal unshakable hope, Jesus Christ. For those who hope in the Lord, the one who is waiting on the one that is the essence of their lives, they will renew. Everybody say renew. renew. They will not just get out of trouble. They will not get, just get out of the rubbish. They will not just be not stuck in the mud anymore. Okay, at least we are out of the rubbish. No, no, no. What's your expectation of next year? And what he's going to do It's going to be new. It's going to be fresh. It's going to be exciting. It's something that he wants you to wow about him. He always wants you to wow about him because he's your God, he's your father. Hello. So in the way that he wants to take you in the new, out of the rubbish, out of the things that you struggle with, is so that out of that place, you not just thank you that you're out of the rubbish, but that you stand amazed at who he is. Amazed at who he is. Amazed at who he is. And in that place of always being amazed at the cross, on, and what he has done through the cross. Your strength will be renewed so that you can soar as the eagle on the wind of the spirit. So that you can run the race. Eyes focused on Christ. Author, perfecter of your faith. Hey, Hebrews 12, 2. So that you can run. So that you can fly. So that you can soar, man. Can we take that for next year? Can we take that? Yes, it's easy just to confess. That I will soar. I will run. No. That's, that's a trick. That's not, that's not according to the word. But according to the word, there's a waiting on him because I respect him. Because I say, I cannot do this without you. So if you go through struggles, I want to encourage you to say, God, this year I'm not going to do it without you. I try to do it with you. But help me to see you. And that through the blood of Christ, tomorrow will be a new, fresh opportunity amen are you with me next one we're going nearly for a landing therefore we do not lose heart tell your neighbor do not lose heart because god's going to do a new thing though outwardly we are wasting away can you believe it wasteland wasting away yet inwardly everybody say inwardly we are being renewed day by day day by day who has seen all the people, and you saw more the beauty, more the beauty. Even in marriages, sometimes they only find the beauty in one another only late in life. Oh, man, that's a sh not a shame. Let's not say it's a shame. That's a waste. That's a waste, even if we are wasting away. Okay, let's not waste our lives. Okay, let's find the beauty in one another a little bit earlier. Okay. Now, as was here. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal. It's achieving for us. Your trouble is achieving for you. Oh, when your trouble is successful in the hands of God, it's bringing you in a better place. Eh, there's troubles that I must overcome. But what did uh, Joshua and Caleb said? The giants are our food, are our food. The intimidation, the, the, the intimidation that is trying to get us out of God's promises is going to be our food. We're going to grow through it. It's going to be for our benefit. Let's say the giants are going to be for my benefit. Oh, man. Okay. For our light in a moment, momentary troubles and are achieving, are doing something when they are successful for us. And eternal glory, eternal beauty, God's glory is God's beauty, attractiveness, that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes. So if this is the truth, then what can, are you going to do? We're going to fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. 
think upon the things that's from above. The word says, eh? Oh my God, help you. I'm not going to go into this now. But fix your eyes, my brother. That one, you remember that scripture? And you will remember Hebrews 12 too. Fix your eyes. Get your eyes in the right place. Get your eyes in the right place. Get your eyes in the right place. It's not that I'm going to face the giant and God come and help me. No, I'm going to look at Christ. I'm looking at God. And then, so by the way, who are you? David said, who are you to come against us? Then you challenge your circumstances in the light with a question mark. Not God, where are you? Question mark. God is there. But I question the circumstances. Because some circumstances sent by God to do some certain things. I'm looking at God. I'm not questioning God. And then all things work for the good for those who. For who? For everyone. No. For those who love him. Those who focus on him. Those who honor him. For those Everything will work for the good. Get your focus on Christ in all your situations. Your success better be. Because sometimes that's the place where you can lose the focus the most. Is when you are successful and everything is just fine. Make sure Christ is in the center that you enjoy it with him. Okay, next one. Is this the last one, I think? And we all, who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory that we are captured by his glory we are we are arrested by his glory we not just see his glory we are it's just that, that, what Philippe says, that guy that is in love you know according to the stories he's just floating there because he's totally arrested you don't know that okay it's too far back for some of us. May God help us all. Great. Unveiled faces. That is, we are in this place where we wow about him. The face is unveiled. We can see because the heart, we see through the heart. Open the eyes of our heart, Lord. Amen. We are being, for those, we are transformed into his image with ever, ever, everybody say ever. Ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. That ever-increasing glory, and other translations, from glory to glory. Like we say when we bless the students, we say, let it be an eternal process. That we acknowledge that you, have went, you went from His beauty to more of His beauty, to more of His beauty. From eternal value, you, at the end of the year, you have more eternal value being placed in you. Amen. Now let that be true for you. Let that be true for me. How do you plan through the Holy Spirit that end of next year there will be more of His glory in you? Because that's going to be the Spirit's agenda. That is God's agenda with you. That end of next year you will not less have less trouble. If you're not willing to grow in Him, God can organize that there's more trouble. That doesn't mean when you have trouble you are resisting God. That's not what I'm saying. But all things will be his servants for his purpose. For his purpose. Are you with me? <clears throat> in that first verse, they, there's not time for that. But in that first Isaiah verse, just a few verses further. He says, so that. He says, so that you will honor and praise him. The purpose of doing something more, uh, more is so that you will be more in love with him. You will respect him more. You will honor him more. The fear of God will be more in your life. That is his purpose. In, and his agenda when he does something new in your life. So can you ask that question in this time? God, how must I honor you more through my financial situation? Not just how are you going to change my financial situation, Lord? But how must I honor you more in my financial situation? I will honor you. I, I, your promises are yes and amen. Finish. I don't have to bargain with you. Because you already said the promises are yes and amen. I don't have to perform. I need to respect the fact that what you said is the truth. So my faith in the word is first of all I respect what he said that God is not a liar 
And when you start with, I respect the truth, then you come in a place where your faith can be pure. Your faith can be without motive. Where my faith, I can take the word, and it's actually a trick to change my circumstances, a trick to get the blessing. That's sometimes what prosperity teaching did. A trick to get certain things, to get out of certain things. But when I start with, I respect the word. Because I know where it comes from. I know who's the center of the word. The living word, Jesus Christ. Start there. When you are discouraged that your, the things does not work out in your life. It doesn't work out in your relationship. It doesn't work out in your future with the challenges that you face. And you feel, I, I don't have the courage to believe that it will change. Start with, not there. Start with, I will respect the word of God. That this is the final say. What he says, I believe, I respect. If according to me, it works out. If according to me, I, I, I understand it. If according to me, it's logic or not logic. If my experience of the past worked out when I interacted with the word, I will not think about the former things. According to God's new covenant, his new commitment for, with you next year. It's about your heart. You will have the heart he has. You will think the way he thinks. And the former things is gone through the blood of Christ. God, come and help us. We need you, Lord. God, we really need you. And I pray that every man, woman in this place, that we will understand the depth of the meaning of the new that you want to bring in us every day more and more of you and how you are excited about every man and woman in this place and really excited about their future where you have already in your heart and in your mind the strategies for your sons and for your daughters for next year god i pray especially then also for your mercy and your grace there where there's so many people that are going through circumstantial hell out there in the nations lord God, help us by your grace not to forget them, but to be there through our prayers. To be there for them through our prayers, Lord. We thank you for that breakthrough that you give each one of us, Lord. And that we know you will protect us to do your will. You will give us your grace. You will give us your mercy. You will provide everything, everything we need to live according to your dream and your will. That's our prayer, Lord, in Jesus' name. As all say, amen, amen, let it be so. Hallelujah.